As we come on the air tonight, many homes across San Diego are decked out with Halloween decorations, including those fake spider webs. While they help create a spooky vibe, they're also dangerous for wildlife. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. CBS 8's Alex Lai talked with a wildlife expert about the dangers for small animals. This is a classic Halloween decoration, usually strung along bushes like this or up in the front of people's houses. But a lot of wildlife can't see the decorations and will fly into it, getting entrapped, causing injuries, even possibly breaking their bones. Try to think when you're planning your decorations, like if I had small, small little claws and small little feet, could I get stuck in this? While festive, these thick fibers are a trap for small wildlife. If it's a bird, it can cause a lot of injuries to their feathers. And so once they get out, you know, their feathers are all messed up. They can't properly fly. Struggling to get untangled can cause constrictions, which can be deadly. They get wrapped around their arms and stuff, and um, it causes really bad, and, like, the, the skin can start sloughing off. Um, it's, it's a very serious thing. thing that we like Chantal LaRose is the wildlife operations manager at San Diego Humane Society's Project Wildlife Program. She says animals such as birds, bats, young possums, and squirrels are at risk. They're not aware that it's there. So, like, they might... They could maybe see it, but they're not going to understand like what they're looking at because it's not supposed to be there. It's not natural to their environment. She also warns against decorations with mesh or netting. If birds land on it, they could get their feet stuck in it. Same thing like possums and raccoons, they can get their hands stuck in these things. But what do you do if you see a small animal stuck in decorations? If it's a rabies vector, if it's a bat or maybe a skunk, um, we advise that you call our HLE or our dispatch department. Um, people shouldn't be handling rabies vectors just out of precaution. But for anything else like possums and stuff, you can just take the whole thing and bring it to us. Don't try to untangle them yourselves. LaRose says entrapment isn't a concern for domestic animals like our cats and dogs, but like all other decorations, make sure they don't eat it. Alex Lai, CBS Thank you, Alex. We are following developing news near the border where all westbound lanes of the 905 in Otay Mesa are closed because of a deadly crash. This happened a few hours ago near Britannia Boulevard. At least one person has died, we're told. Another person was taken to a hospital with unknown injuries. We're still trying to figure out what led up to this crash. Border Patrol is leading the investigation. They're asking people to avoid the area as they do their work. The search for appropriate housing for the so-called bolder-than-most rapist is turning up short. At a hearing today, Liberty Healthcare asked for more time in their search for Alvin Quarles. But his attorneys are now pushing for him to be released as a transient. He would still be supervised and have to check in regularly. The district attorney's office is opposed to that move and filed a motion in support of Liberty Healthcare. The judge ultimately continued this hearing to next month. She also gave Liberty Healthcare questions to answer before that hearing to aid her in deciding the transient motion. A preliminary hearing began today for a former Marine accused of murdering his girlfriend back in 2016. 41-year-old Raymond McLeod disappeared and fled the country. He managed to evade capture until he was finally caught in 2022. CBS 8's Kelly Hassadal reports from the downtown courthouse about what happened today in court. This is your warning. Uh, if you have little ones in the room right now, this is a case for mature audiences only. So this afternoon, we heard testimony from the friends that Raymond McLeod visited here in San Diego back in 2016. Uh, one of them, a former Marine, uh, testified about the moment he opened the door to his guest room and found the victim's body. What happened when you opened the door? Uh, I opened the door and I saw Crystal in a uh, on the left side of the bed. She was uh, mostly covered with a sheet, and she had a one of her arms up uh, in a kind of an awkward position for someone who would have been sleeping almost uh, straight up in what seemed to be a very unnatural position for someone who was who was sleeping it became clear to me very quickly that that she had that she was deceased 
Now, the judge ordered us not to identify any of the civilian witnesses today. Uh, here is a look at the 41-year-old defendant in the courtroom. So McLeod's friend, the former Marine you just heard from, testified he saw a good amount of blood on the bed and on the floor. He called 911 and gave Mitchell CPR until emergency crews arrived. Now, we also heard from that man's girlfriend, who was also in the apartment that night back in June of 2016. Uh, the couple had a six-month-old baby that she was up with on and off all night. Uh, the girlfriend told the judge at one point, she woke up and heard Mitchell crying and thought maybe she and McLeod had had a fight. The couple had been out drinking earlier. Uh, but during cross-examination, McLeod's defense attorney pointed out, you initially thought uh, they seemed pretty happy, right? When they arrived, did every, everything seem normal to you? Yes. Did they seem like they were happy together? Yes. And this is the first time that you had ever met Crystal? Yes. Did she seem happy to be there, according to you? Yes. And in your opinion, did they seem happy as a couple? Uh, yes, nothing to lead me to think anything otherwise. Now, the defense also hinted at one possible defense strategy. Statements were read from women who say they had sexual relationships with McLeod. They talked about being choked, sometimes to the point they went unconscious, uh, alluding to the fact that this case could have just been rough sex that went wrong. Now, Mitchell's mother is in the courtroom listening to all of this, and here's what she told me. Pathetic. He's pathetic. You know, it just seems, I mean, watching how it's unfolding right now and seeing him sit there and act all professional and stuff. All I could think of was that night in that room and how he brutally, brutally beat and murdered my daughter and then comes to court and sits there like he has a defense. And at one point, Mitchell's mother got up and left during cross-examination. Uh, you can imagine this has been extremely tough for her to sit through. This hearing is expected to last until Thursday. Kelly Hassett, all CBS 8. Thank you, Kelly. County supervisors are now exploring all legal options against corporations that are accused of contributing to the ongoing cross-border sewage crisis in the South Bay. The board unanimously voted today in favor of that and to extend the local state of emergency declaration. The board is expected to get an update on those legal efforts every 90 days in a closed session. Since October of 2018, the U.S. section of the International Boundary and Water, Water Commission says it has seen more than 200 billion gallons of toxic waste enter the U.S. through the Tijuana River Valley. County supervisors today also approved the sheriff's request for more smart streetlights. Dozens of these license plate readers will be installed in unincorporated communities like Alpine, Borrego Springs, and Julian. This technology captures the license plate of vehicles, then stores the data for 30 days. It can only be used for misdemeanor or felony investigations, not to issue traffic citations. It is unclear how quickly these readers will be installed, but some are already up and running in communities like Poway, Del Mar, and Encinitas. There is a new program supporting small businesses in City Heights. It's run by the City Heights Community Development Corporation and Kim Center for Social Business. The program, LEAPS, will provide small business owners with training and tools to succeed to teach them how to implement more equitable practices in their business. City Heights was selected because it is home to a diverse population and workforce. We want everyone to have an opportunity to fulfill their potential. For every worker to thrive, and when every worker thrives, our Small businesses thrive, and again, when our small businesses thrive, our communities thrive. If you are interested in this program, you must be a business owner with five or more employees. The famous Sandcastle Estate just hit the market, and it is expected to smash home sales records here in San Diego County. It's perched on some prime real estate overlooking La Jolla Bay. The listing agents gave CBS 8's Brian White a tour today. He joins us live from outside the home. Brian, what can you tell us about that amazing home? Oh, it was gorgeous, absolutely jaw-dropping. But before you see the tour, I want to show you something interesting here. See these privacy hedges behind me? They must be at least 20 feet tall. And as it turns out, landscapers use that genie lift there to get high enough in order to trim those hedges and keep them looking so good. So now I want to show you a grand tour of the place. This seaside mansion's hitting the market for a whopping $108 million. Known as the Sandcastle, this architectural wonder was designed to resemble the Chateau de Versailles. Here we are at the guest residence. 
and it's fashioned after the Petit Trianon. You see the arches, you see the structure, three bedrooms upstairs, family room, game room, and also has a phenomenal bar area. Brett Dickinson is one of the listing agents for Compass. Next, he showed me the main dining room. It's an ellipse and it has uh, 18 and 24 karat gold all throughout as well as crystal chandeliers. Billionaire Darwin Deason bought the home in 2009 from San Diego hotelier Doug Manchester. A few years later, he bought the home next to it and joined the two together in an epic remodel. He bought the house next door, it went through years and years of permitting, going back and forth, hired the best people you could get, and then he, he put this together. It's 13,000 square feet with 10 bedrooms and breathtaking balcony views, but what makes it even more unique is what's grandfathered in that the Coastal Commission won't let you do anymore, like build the seawall. What I have here is uh, the same sand they use at Augusta. This is sand that uh, is not local. It was imported sand. You have your own private beach down here, which is elevated about 10 feet off of the sand. And if that isn't enough, this place has even more one-of-a-kind features. This is a cave that goes quite a ways back, about 80 yards. This was actually a vacation home for Deason, but he wasn't using it as much as he used to. It was a dream, it was a vision, but like many of our sellers, uh, it went through its process. His kids were here, his grandkids were here, everybody enjoyed it, and he just wants to sell it. If the property sells for the $108 million asking price or anywhere close to it, it will obliterate real estate records in the county. The current record holder is a $44 million sale last year in Del Mar. Marcella and Carlo, back to you. That is crazy. It looks like a hotel. I mean, it does. if, I was if, gonna if you're say, buying it as a hotel, that'd be like. Right. You could buy it as an investment in a hotel, make it an Airbnb. Like, yeah, like I was just saying, how many, how many right Airbnb breakfast, rooms is that? <laughs> wow. We could all go in on it, like everyone that works at the station. <laughs> In the that county, is fantastic. Million bucks. <laughs> we are looking into rumors that a beloved taco shop is closing. Still ahead. Plus, our first look at a horror film sequel that was filmed in the East County. And later, the big milestone for local prison inmate scholars. We are gearing up for the rest of tonight, and so we are mostly clear. We've seen a few high clouds out there, 71 degrees right now for downtown, also some light wind speeds. And in the future, we're talking about some cloud cover by the weekend. All those details coming up.